I'm here with Mr. Bill Harlan, and uh, Bill, I, I'm, I'm just tickled to death to be down here. I, I really appreciate you well, sharing your time with us. Well, we appreciate you coming. We're proud of what we're doing, what we've done, and glad to share it with other people. Well, I was noticing, I was talking to the cameraman on the, down, on the way down here. How many years has Harlansdale Farms been a brood barn? We were identified with this place with a name in 1935. Uh, from 1930 to 1935, my father uh, acquired several parcels around a, a, a central farm here. And then uh, <clears throat> when the breeders started a registry and gave all our horses a name and a number, why well, then we decided we'd be identified with a place. <clears throat> and so he came up with the name Harlan's Dale Farm. Uh, and I really can't give you the genesis of where he did, why he did that, and put that Dale on the end, but he'd been somewhere and seen a, a Dale on the end of a family name for a farm and thought that was appropriate. So we've been identified that way since 1935. And, uh, Farmer in the Dale. Hmm? Farmer in the Dale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm discovering where I got my name now. But it, 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 the history in this building, though, is, is just phenomenal. I know from midnight sun on. In 1941, they built this building, uh, which is the central uh, part of the farm now, and gives us uh, an identity with this, this uh, building, <clears throat> which you can see off the highway. And uh, soon after they built the building here, why they really got bigger into the walking horse business. Prior to that time, we had some saddlebred horses here, which were <clears throat> the main component of Middle Tennessee horse shows. And the walking horse classes were a, a, all not an afterthought, but a, a, a little supplement to a saddlebred horse show. And we went along with that dual personality here until Midnight Sun came along. And he pretty much pushed the saddlebreds out of our place here. And he had such a dramatic impact on us and the walking horse industry around here that we've had a dual identity. We were Midnight Sun and we were Harmsdale Farm. And we went forward with that for a long time. And, uh, and the, midnight, the coming of Midnight Sun was, uh, it, we suddenly realized about 1946 hey, we had a piece of history in our hands here. Because he was so dominant in every way and so widely accepted. <clears throat> Up to that time, what I would say that the gate of the Tennessee walking horse was looking for an identity. It really was hard to say, well, they ought to be a little square, or a little more swingy or something. <clears throat> Midnight Sun put that big, bold, hard lick on. And from that point on, everything went was identified back to how it compared to Midnight Sun. And uh, we were blessed to be in that environment, which gave us a reason to stay in the business through thick and thin, hard times, good times, all that. So here we are today, uh, 35 to 05, and it's been a nice ride. Oh yeah, well I'm <clears throat> I know that when, when people talk about Harlan's Dale, they, they always bring up Midnight Sun oh, because yeah. he is. But now when they talk about Harlan's Dale, they talk about another great stallion that I've, I've had the opportunity to see and I, I literally love, and that's out on parole. Isn't he a nice horse? Oh, he's a fantastic he's horse. He's a great horse. And we're so proud to have him here. He's doing a great job for us. He was a very popular celebration winner. Uh, they take him back over there, as you've noticed, every year and and let pe different people ride him on the showgrounds. I mean, this is this is fantastic disposition. But before we got to him, we, we went through, we've had the benefit of a lot of horses which are now looked on as foundation stock. Going back to Sun's Delight, Pride of Midnight, but no, but not you, I, I know what it is. There's so many of them. That sometimes yeah, it, but prior to midnight was owned by this place. The, the a lot of the others that stood here were we were the agents for them right. and proud to have them manage their breeding programs. But prior to midnight 
was, was one of the last colts of Midnight Sun. <clears throat> Midnight Sun being one of the last crop of colts by Wilson Allen. And of course, you know, Wilson Allen had sired all the prior winners of the celebration except one up to the time of Midnight Sun. So he was the earlier dominant sire, then, then uh, Midnight Sun became a dominant horse. And there were other good horses around because you can't have all one bloodline through your genetics. And so th there were lots of others during that time. But he was still the one we fell back on as the base for our breed uh, going forward. <clears throat> Pride of Midnight put another dimension in there. He was an athletic kind of horse with a big loose shoulder and could step up <clears throat> and put the gait on him which we treasure today. Either the way they're flat shod or, or built up, they've got a, a, a show horse qualities that come through from the prior to midnight line that nothing else had put on them. And he had that basic walk and he was shown seven times, was tied first seven times, was never shown at celebration. There are lots of myths and stories about that, but the, the fact is he didn't show that. So you can't say he was a celebration winner. We don't know whether he would have been or not, but he was that kind of quality. And then he put out a line of colts that by the time they began to mature, he was the dominant sire of the breed at the time he died. In fact, there are some of my friends and, and some that are not so friends have said, it's a good thing he died because there wouldn't have been any other horse in the pedigrees from his point on. Mm -hmm. So we, we've been blessed here <clears throat> with having those two lines here. Midnight Sun being one of the last sons of Wilson Allen, Pride of Midnight being one of the last sons of, of Midnight Sun, and that blood flows through. And you can look at celebration records during the 1980s and the 90s. And you'll find prior to midnight, as I've forgotten how many of those celebration winners, six of them, I believe, five or six. And it, it, it got where you couldn't brag on them. You know, hell, everybody's up to <laughs> their prides. <laughs> <laughs> their pride horses. But there are, other, there are other good bloodlines that have surfaced, and so they complement each other going forward. So we keep getting. We've had the, the influence some would say negative, uh, more and more restrictions on your ability to show a Tennessee walking horse and the equipment you used and the condition of the horse. And we proudly say that Pride of Midnight saved the breed because he had the natural ability to step up and step under. Well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that's what a lot of trainers, they, they couldn't believe that this horse could, could do that. And, and then once they found out he could, that, that, that's when everybody was wanting to breed to him. Two of my good friends that are trainers in Shelville now have told, with me sitting in seats in a public forum, have said, if this man's farm hadn't come along, we'd be out of business. I won't call any names. They're friends and, and, and big competitors, too. But they've, uh, they always make me feel good when I see them because I know what they've said before. Well, Harlandsdale is history. About I pride, mean, well, and about pride of midnight. Pride of midnight, midnight sun, and all of them reflect back to the Harlandsdale farm and the history of the breed right. and, the, and the ability. But I do know the natural ability of the pride bloodline is one that every trainer seeks now. Right. Maintain a, a broodmare herd here of 50 plus plus or minus, raise about 35 colts a year uh, of our own. We breed some mares, a lot of mares I guess, for the public and uh, it's several hundred each year. Uh, it varies from year to year, but it's, it's several hundred and some of the horses, the stallions attract more mares than others and their attractiveness comes and goes depending on their age and the success of their offspring. And we try to breed our mares to a, a quality mixture of these horses. And then we're 
in the succeeding generations we're crossing those bloodlines. But right now we're expecting, I think, 36 folds next spring. That's great. Yeah. We had five this fall, which would supplement that. And uh, it, in the years past, we've had, <clears throat> we've carried more mares than that. But we found that this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a number that we can manage with the staff we can that uh, this place will support and still have a quality offering of yearlings to sell and the yearling sales every year are our, our revenue source mm -hmm. uh, the stallions are at best a break-even uh, situation the stud fees hardly cover the expense of managing these horses but uh, we pioneered, I would like to think, the, the yearling sales. I think we had our first yearling sale in 1958. And uh, for many years we had it here on the farm. It included our, our yearlings and yearlings brought here by people who had bred to the horses that we were standing here. And we had a limitation on that, which went from a one to two to three year, three day sale. And we went forward with that till uh, 1972, and then uh, Charlie Bobo offered the, his facilities for us to join his general consignment sale. And over the years, we became a major part of that sale. And the last uh, few years that we were there, we were the active managers there. And uh, we did that until uh, the late 80s, I guess. But I've come forward in a limited amount of time to where we are now, where we have out on parole, we have Jen's Major General. I don't have, that's a picture of him up there, and I've got Gold Power. I've had Dark Spirits Rebel and Pride's Dark Spirit and Pride's Genius, Pride's Gold Coin. It was, he was raised here. He's the sire of Gold Power, and Gold Power was the sire of Main Power of this year's celebration winner. Well, on your brute, on your yearlings now. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you go about selling them? Do you still hold a sale down here? And no, we, we have uh, joined uh, what they call a yearling extravaganza, which has been sell, held successfully at Sand Creek, and now at uh, Sale of Champions ground next to the Celebration Ground. It's managed by Gerald Pettigo and, and uh, David Landrum. And we've been a, a successful part of that for the last few years. And uh, over time, <clears throat> we found that it was hard for us to comprise a major part of a three-day sale and still be the managers of that sale. Right, and it, it it worked out fine. We pay somebody else a commission now instead of trying to be the sale managers. We're, we're we've been happy with this arrangement. Yeah, it gives you time to kind of kick back and enjoy yourself and and see some other coats out there too, doesn't I it? I do. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm following the colt in every fifth one instead of looking at every other one or right. every one going in. So. <laughs> right, <clears throat> it's a different environment and a happier time for me and uh, the folks that that help me. How many acres do y'all have here, Bill? We have, we have 201 acres here. I have, uh, my wife and I own another farm of about the same size in this county, and we, we use the two of them uh, jointly and move stock from place to place depending on what their activity is at the time. Um, and it takes about 400 acres to support what I'm doing. Right. Uh, but we have a, the this is our visible spot mm -hmm. in the place we where the public identifies us, and uh, we have a, a high rate of acceptance here with the population in Franklin. They like to come out and see what we're doing, take get the good feel of being on a horse place. Well, this is a beautiful place out here. Well, there's one thing I want to ask you though. Now there's a lot of speculation about this. Most stud barns they take their. Uh, horses and they have them to where they run in a paddock and all of this but I read somewhere that 
when Midnight Sun was alive, that he never ran in a paddock, <coughs> that y'all worked him under saddle every day. That's exactly right. And I really uh, don't know why he was managed that way, except a man that worked here at that time, Fred Laws, did not believe in turning a horse out. He came from a racetrack environment. Uh, he was with us until the last year that Midnight Sun was alive, and he didn't want him turned out. And Fred made a very persuasive case that we shouldn't do that. So the horse accepted his environment. He had a nice big box stall here, big 14 square stall, and he did. He got his exercise. I was blessed with the opportunity when, as a young man to ride him and exercise him here and really was proud of that opportunity. You know, while I was exercising Midnight Sun, folks were watching me ride Midnight Sun. <laughs> right. And that was a great treat, you know. <laughs> folks would wave at me and I, I think that's, that's, that's swell. Well, now you do a great job now showing Revelation. I, well, I know I watched you. He and I are getting now. old together and so that's got to stop one of these days, but I do enjoy that horse. Well, he's a beautiful <clears> horse, <throat> I can he, tell you that. He, he's just about all I can manage. And when he comes down that, down that, uh, runway into the celebration ground, I mean he swells up like a balloon when he hits that ring, he's on go. And I'm sitting up there wondering whether I can turn him around the next time I got to turn him around or not. Do you think he knows where he's at? Hey, he knows where he's, he knows he's in a show ring and he, he's putting it on. And we, he's, he's put out a few good ones. I haven't bred him as much as I should because I enjoy showing him, so. And Bill Bobo does a good job. Oh, him? Bill Bobo's fantastic he, he job. Puts now. Him, he puts him together for me. Bill <coughs> Bobo is one of your top trainers, no matter which way you look at it. He is yeah, a fine person. He, he's a good man. I had him. David Landrum had him for a year or two for me, and he he prepared him in a great way for me. So I'm always, in fact. I, I, I think I encourage the celebration to put in an old folks class over there. I was showing in the 50 and over and the 60 and over, and I kept being the oldest guy in so the you where I was, up. and I said, give me another shot. And so they made it 70 and over. And my hope is There'll be an 80 and over. 80. Oh, it would be great. Hey, I think it's fantastic. I love it. I love these different hey, classes. There's a lot of guys in that class that are about, they, I may have been the oldest in there, but there's a lot of them creeping up there. Oh, yeah, but they, and, and it's look, just the fact that they have the classes for uh, everybody and, and everybody could compete. And of course, the lady that won the class this year, she's a junior in that class. She just got in there this year for the first time, but hit 70. And then, of course, she wiped everybody out. That's, and that's rookie's the this, luck, right? That's the way this champion's golf career, you know. <laughs> Nicholas comes in there at age 50, and he wins everything for 10 years. And then there's another guy that turns 50. And, you know, this, this I don't know. It, it's a bad situation for old folks. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's great to just get in there and oh, have a good Oh, I love time. it. I love to compete. I look back at the times when Midnight Sun was around, and I showed some flat shot horses at that time. My One of my greatest thrills was winning the two-year-old class at Columbia. I think it was 1948, and a two-year-old horse by Midnight Sun. And that sucker lapped the ring twice while everybody else was trying to go around once. I, <laughs> everybody said he's going to break up. I didn't. This boy ain't going to break up. <laughs> Just let him I never go. got to show him but once. Look, they were. No, the judge sidled up to somebody and said, "Don't leave here till I talk to you." He wanted <laughs> to buy. Him. Anyway, it was. A, I enjoyed it all, and still enjoy all this. I'm ready to, to take a tour of the barn. I want everybody to see just what a fantastic place this is and, and let them touch on some of this history too. Oh, I'd love to. Well, let's take, uh, a, let's take a trip. Bill, we're out here in the hallway of this magnificent old barn and I know we've got Classic Generator over here and we've got Jen's Major General over here, but right there's where I want to walk. Right. I want to go down here and, and get a look at, right. out on parole. He's one of the leading sires today. He's, he bred lots of mares, and he's doing a good job for us here, too. Well, I can tell you, I remember back in celebration where when Benjamin Bowen went out and rode him. Yeah. And uh, he just looked like he was having a ball, and that little boy up on his back. That goes to show that the Tennessee walking horse 
even a stallion. Now here's a breeding stallion. Breeds every week. Right. But a 10 year old <clears throat> young man can ride <clears throat> and make him look good. And you made Benjamin look good, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, he made Benjamin look good. And he's got some proud owners who really support this horse. Mr. and Ms. Baskin just couldn't be more supportive of a stallion. And we just were really proud to have this horse. Well, I know that he was, he was great out there. I know that several people rode him. Uh, maybe this year when he comes out, I'll get up there and take me a spin on no, him. you need to do that. But it, we need to do that. I've, I've rode a few real good horses, but I think this one will probably be the greatest one I ever rode. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he is great. I remember when they brought him back into fraternity a couple of years ago that, I mean, he stole the show. Yeah, no. I mean, he, he looked good. Everybody was saying, bring him back again. We want some more of him because <laughs> he did look good. And now, yeah. We got some more stallions down here, too. Yeah. We need to check on. But he is he has done his job. Let me uh, let me open the door on on the Major General, if you know. All right. I'd like. I'm really proud of this horse. He's 20 years old. He's he's put out as many high class horses as anyone living today, and he's still a very popular horse in this breed. This is Jen's Major Major General, and he's got some supportive owners, which is part of the package you've got to have to have a successful stallion. Now, what's some of the horses that he has sired? Well, Jose is one that's a very popular horse out now. Jose, Jose? Yeah. And uh, MG above the rest? MG above the rest. And, oh, yeah. Well, he is a pretty thing. And he's he's how old, Bill? He's 20. 20 years old. And he looks like a colt. Now, he does that. Now, he looks like he's awful young. And he's a prize generator horse. Well, he's a pretty thing. Got a nice head on him. Mm-hmm. I love the disposition of these walking horses, yeah. though. You're not going to find that in every breed. Just like you're not going to find a, every breed that you can take a world grand champion and a child can ride him. Right. Yeah. This is Gold Power. He's the sire of Main Power. And well, Ladies and gentlemen, Main Power is our current world grand champion. Right. Come here, buddy. And we're about to see his sire. Now. He's really, he's really a sweetheart. Back up, back up, don't walk out on top of me. And he's a good boy and got a lot of good coat. He was a sire of the yearling world grand champion this year. Power Force. Now how old is this one? He is 11. 11 years old? Yes, sir. And well, he's, he's a pretty thing. He's a prize gold coin horse. So I've shown you a generator horse a horse with a little pusher blood in him, and now this gold coin horse. Now he is a pretty thing. He's the biggest horse I've got too. Hey, how, how many hands does this one stand? He's, he's 16 plus barefooted. 16 plus barefoot. Okay. Oh, she's on. Uh, this now we got sweepstakes. Sweep Very popular horse. And we've only had two years. We, we've, we're really pleased with the acceptance. Come here, buddy. We ain't this going nowhere. This is sweepstakes. Uh, he has another supportive owner, which is part of the mix that you gotta have. Well, he's a pretty thing. But he's a, another generator horse, and really coming on as people people like his colts, and we get a lot of calls from this horse. Well, they're getting more and more. Uh, horses in the show ring now, especially the way the walking horse industry is growing. Mm -hmm. More people are getting into it. And the different classes, it opens up a whole new era for a lot of these horses. Right. Now, uh, we're here with uh, Coin Maker, right? Right, this is Coin Maker. He has won probably as many celebration blues as any stallion living. Now he's and a show pleasure. He, he's won the sh he's shown both ways, but his championships recently have been the show pleasure division. And he's just so dominant. Everybody knows they're running for second when they go in. Well, he and is beautiful. We're standing this fall and, and uh, have, have some bookings lined up for him. We're looking forward to seeing his coach. But now he's a very personable horse. Oh, yeah. Yes. And he's a gold coin horse. And that, oh. that adds a that good personality side to him. He's a good size horse, too. Yes. But he's got a beautiful head on him. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Bill, the more you walk through here, these horses, they all of them, they just, they're just ready to walk up and be petted and oh, talk yeah. to. They'll come to you. They don't, uh, come here, buddy. Now, right here is Revelation. Yeah. Now, here's one that you show. <laughs> We're going to have to show some more footage of you and him. Yeah, all right. All right. I, I hope you find some good footage. Uh, he did good over in Murfreesboro. Yeah. Didn't you, buddy? Yeah, we've... We've had two or three good shows in our lifetime. Now anyway, this is your horse, right? He, he belongs mm -hmm. to us, yes mm -hmm. sir. He belongs to us. He and Gold Power are the two that we own. I and know. That's something we're agents for and proud to have him here. I know Bill is crazy about him. Yeah. And this one right here is Classic Generator. And he, we don't want to miss any of them. We're going to no, talk to all no, of them. Once you tell, this horse has been a four-time celebration winner. He, he dominated the fine harness division for many years, and he's about as pretty. He's another, well, of course, he's my generator. Yeah, we need to bring him on out so we can get him on camera a little bit. Oh, come on, buddy. Step up here. Step up here. He's pretty headed yeah. horse. Yeah, Wide he is away, pretty. Gentle. Big mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah. Well, I've noticed just about every one of these horses that we've looked at today, Bill, all of them are just as friendly. Oh, yeah. You can tell there's a lot of love been given to these horses, and that's to me that's what makes a Tennessee walking horse so great is they return that love tenfold. Right, right, sure do. Well, let's go out and look at you, your pastures. I'd like right. to see some land. Right. Bill, I know normally you you have a lot of different colts and and mares out here. Of course, these up here. But how many mares did you say you normally keep? Uh, we keep about 50 plus. Uh, it, it varies some, but uh, I haven't counted them recently. I don't have, I'd say 55, something like that, of our own. And then we board a few for other people, especially during breeding season. And uh, I, I have some of them here now. The other farm, I've got some that'll fold next spring. Uh, there's a few mares over here that'll also fall next spring, and these are some we just weaned the colts off of. All right. And their babies are uh, in down by the river and in one direction and, and another. Well, you got over 200 acres here, so we don't expect them to be right no, up here I, at the fence. They're out doing something. I really didn't have them congregated right here for <laughs> you today. I've got a few mares with colts in the stables, and they're they're holding there until we can do some things to, uh, to their mamas today or see about their mamas today, see if they're in heat or something like that. But normally we'd have them out here on this side and uh, the, we like to cater to the, the people in Franklin who like to see mares with babies in the fields. Right. And uh, we like to have some fresh things for them to look at. 